Hey guys, Jess from Curse here. We're here at FanFest 2013 in Iceland, and I'm sitting down with Andy from CCP. She's the senior producer of EVE Online. So first of all, hi Andy, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Very good, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Um, well, I had the, the great pleasure of talking to John Lander at uh, PAX East 2013, just about a month ago, and he was telling me about all the cool things you have lined up for this show. Um, and one of the things he mentioned was that the upcoming expansion Odyssey is really aiming to bring EVE back to its roots. Can you expand on that and sort of what that means? Sure, I mean, Odyssey is about what I call the original promise of EVE Online, of this amazing universe full of things to explore and opportunities and of course the excitement and danger coming from the fact that other people are out there too and who knows what they might do. Mm -hmm. One of the other things he mentioned was that Odyssey is trying to make the game more accessible to new players. Now does he mean just in terms of what a new character and you know what the little ships can do or is that also going to be making it easier in terms of the amount of information you need to know before starting the game? Because it's obvi I mean, obviously, I'm sure you've heard this time and time again, it's so intimidating for new players. It, I think it's still going to be a bit intimidating, but a lot of what we're trying to do with Odyssey is to not tell so much, but instead just show mm -hmm. and be more explicit about what the things are that you can do and so that you see them out there in space better, for example. Mm -hmm. um, now switching over to the actual game um, and some of the PvP aspects, I recently heard that there was some big in-game war between Goon Swarm and Tappy and it all started as a result of just a misclick. It was just a mistake um, and then this whole bunch of stuff went down. Can you tell me what, what how CCP felt about that? Did you guys kind of encourage that because it's a very PvP focused game or was that, you know, something you're trying to kind of get away from? Uh, we love when that kind of stuff happens. It's exactly what the game is designed for, is for these like random events to just butterfly effect their way into epic space wars. That's that's exactly what Eve is about. Awesome. So you you guys really promote how hardcore it is and it's you know it has almost, I guess, permadeath, you would call it, when if you if something explodes or, you know, you lose something, it's it's lost. Yep, it's gone. <laughs> and that's, that's really a key to the game. It's also what drives the whole industry aspects of the game and so on, because when you lose a ship, someone has to build the replacement for you, and that's their gameplay. That's how they make money in EVE, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, now, someone once told me um, recently that even even new players with their like little ships kind of serve a purpose in the game because they can do things that you know. Oh well, it's it's so small that it's harder for a large ship to target it because large ships, you know, maybe like bullets are the same size as the tiny ships. And uh, do you feel that that's uh, that's true? Because I've obviously also heard that uh, someone else has told me that you kind of have to like start your character and leave it for about three months so that it, it builds up some passive traits. Which one of those would you say is more more correct? I think the first one is more correct today, especially after some changes we made to how you skill train in the beginning and so on. So there's a number of useful roles for young players in smaller ships to perform both in bigger fleets and so on, and in stuff that you just go out there in the universe and do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then finally, um, with all the Dust514 stuff going on, uh, well, one of our viewers actually just wanted me to give you guys some praise and say how innovative it is and how amazing that you guys have integrated not only uh, cross-platform uh, play, but also just the fact that it's two completely separate games. And um, this is a guy who's been playing since 2006. He says that it's amazing that, you know, even though he's a longtime player, he thinks it's so cool that there's still these exciting upcoming things going on with all the play between Dust and Eve. Um, can you tell us any more about anything upcoming for that? I can just say that I'm super excited as well about mm -hmm. just having these two games and all of the things we can do. So we're in a place where anything is possible, really. Mm -hmm. And now we're just dreaming bigger and bigger for what crazy stuff to do with this integration. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, orbital bombardment is like the ultimate feature to begin with, but that's that's just the start. We can do so much more. And yeah, I'm not going to talk about details here, but I am really, really excited about what's going to come out of this. Uh, well, uh, one final question off of that then. Obviously, you can play EVE without having played Dust. Um, and, I, you know, it seems like they'd be best played uh, in conjunction. But someone else has also told me it's really possible to just play Dust and never play EVE. Do you envision a lot of people doing that? Yeah, that's kind of the whole point of Dust. It's like EVE is a game that's quite unique and is not for everyone. And Dust should be much more accessible, much more easy to pick up and play and, and so on. But then there is this rabbit hole that you can just fall into the enormous complexity and amazingness of the EVE universe if you want to. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. Once again, this is Jess from Curse with your FanFest 2013 coverage. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the game.